Welcome to another demo by Jitterbit. In this demo, we will be covering bidirectional integration between Salesforce and database. As part of our flow, we will first create an account in Salesforce, and that event creation uh, of the account will trigger a workflow within Jitterbit using Jitterbit API to create a record in the database. And once that record is created in the database, the ID from the database is sent, sent back to Salesforce. The other part that we're going to cover is by creating an account in a database. This creation could be uh, by a SQL tool. It could be by another application. It could be by another API call. Uh, but we will create an account in the database. And once that is created, we send that information, uh, this time through a manual intervention within Jitterbit Cloud Studio, to send the information back to Salesforce. Now, once we create the account in Salesforce, that ID from Salesforce that's associated with the newly created account will be sent back to the database. So that way, the two systems are in sync, and that reference is available between both Salesforce and the database. So with that, let's get started. All right, the first step is to create a new record in Salesforce. We have created this little checkbox that triggers the event of sending that information to the database. And we'll go ahead and save. And then this record is created. If we go to our details, we're expecting a database ID, which as you can see is available to us right now, 472. If you go to our tool, our database uh, front end and do a select statement. You can see that we have what we entered in Salesforce available to us in the database in real time. Next, we're gonna go ahead and actually create a record in the database. Uh, let's go ahead and change the name to JB. 2020 provided some information. So we're going to go ahead and insert this record in the database. As you can see, we have our record created. If we go back, notice that my Salesforce ID is not filled out yet for JB 2020. Now let's go back to Salesforce and let's go to navigate to our main account page. Notice now we have JB20 uh, on the recently created. And if we drill into that and look at the details, again, you see the database ID 473. And if we go back to our database and rerun the query, notice now we have the Salesforce ID as well. As you can see, the ID ends with 9ZJQAA which should match the ID in Salesforce uh, as it just shows in the URL. Now let's go ahead and see how this uh, project was created within Jitterbit. So this is Jitterbit Harmony uh, landing page. Here is where you manage your integration. You have recipes and templates. You create and manage your APIs. And you have our Cloud Studio where you design your projects. Let's go ahead and navigate to Cloud Studio. And the project that we created was Salesforce to database. So we're gonna go ahead and drill into that specific project. Notice I have two tabs across the top that uh, shows my two workflows. On the left-hand side, you can see the workflows that I've created, and we're gonna drill into some of the components of these two workflows. And on the right side, we have our connectors. These connectors are either built-in connectors provided by Jitterbit out of the box, but it also includes connectors that I've built on my own and deployed to my own environment uh, using Jitterbit Connector Builder. The example is USPS's address verification, uh, Bamboo HR. We have out of the box many enterprise connectors such as NetSuite, SAP, Salesforce, um, Jira, and some of the other common 
SaaS providers uh, in the market. In the middle, you have your canvas where you design your integration. So let's look at the first use case where we create an account in Salesforce and that in, uh, immediately created a, a record in the database. Leveraging Salesforce's outbound messaging, we called this specific work workflow by creating an API in Jitterbit Harmony, uh, API, ma API manager. And that API pointed to the first operation here within our workflow, which was accept the outbound message from Salesforce. By calling this operation, we are, we are able to get the information for the record ID that was created in Salesforce. We query Salesforce using our Salesforce connector and we take the information from that account and upsert it into the database. There is a transformation that takes place and let's take a look at that where we're getting information from Salesforce in these fields that we've picked um, and we're updating it in, in a database. And this is all a drag and drop uh, capability that you have to map your fields from your source to your target. Once we have the data in the database and a record is created, we go back and get the uh, specific ID from the database and update Salesforce with that database ID. And as with any other outbound messages that uh, is leveraged within Salesforce, we need to send a response back to Salesforce acknowledging that we received that outbound message. So this is how Salesforce database integration works in real time. Now let's look at our database to Salesforce where we created a record in the database and that record uh, was automatically updated in Salesforce. Uh, in the case of the database, we are querying the database for the records that do not have Salesforce IDs. That means that record was initiated outside of Salesforce. And you can look at the uh, query here. We're looking at all the, all the fields that we need where the Salesforce uh, ID is either null or is set to blank. That tells us a new record has been created. And we go through the same process of defining our transformation and we do an upsert into Salesforce. Now, once that record is created in Salesforce, we get the uh, Salesforce um, ID because we wanna send that, back informa that information back to the database. And we query the data uh, from Salesforce, again, apply a transformation rule, and then update the database with the Salesforce ID. Just to summarize, we are able to quickly create an integration where uh, events are synced between Salesforce and database in real time using Jitterbit Harmony and Jitterbit Harmony's API platform. For more information, uh, reach out to us via our social media or our website, and we'll see you next time.